Examination days are coming, so let's have this math review for linear equations. What's a linear equation? A linear equation is an equation for a straight line. It has different forms. Among them are the slope-intercept form, the point-slope form, the two-point form, the standard form, and the general form. But among these forms, we are more interested with the first three forms. Let's begin with the first form, the slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b is the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. In here, m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. Now, the slope m is defined as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 when given two points with coordinates x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2. Another way of looking at this is this is the rise over the run. For example, if we are given this equation, y equals 2x minus 1, the slope is 2 and the y-intercept is negative 1. Graphically, it looks like this. Let's zoom this out a little bit. From this equation, the y-intercept is b equals negative 1. This is the point of intersection between the y-axis and the red line. The coordinate of that point is 0, comma, negative 1, where x sub 1 is 0, y sub 1 is negative 1. Notice that the y-intercept happens when x is 0. If you substitute x equals 0 in this equation, we will have y equals 2 times 0 minus 1, which is equal to y equals negative 1. And this b equals negative 1 now is this y-coordinate of the point of intersection between the y-coordinate and the red line. Now for the slope, our slope is m equals 2. This number 2 is the slope. That is the ratio of the rise over the run. Meaning, in this line, if we go up two units and go right one unit, we will end up with a point that is on the line. For example, in here, if I go up two units, that is one, two, and I go right one unit, I end up with a point that is on the red line. And I can do that anywhere on the line. I can go up two units and go right one unit, and I will end up with a point that's still on the line as long as I started with a point that is on the line. And so we now say that the slope of a line is constant. And that is computed as the ratio of the rise over the run. Now, let's have another example. Let's say we are given y equals negative 2x plus 1. And here the slope is the y-intercept is 1. So graphically, it looks like this. Our b equals 1. So let's locate the point of intersection between the y-axis and the line to be at y equals positive 1. Now, the slope is negative 2. So we write m as the ratio of the rise over the run. And since we are only given here an integer, it is implied that any integer can be written as that integer over 1. Here, our rise is negative 2 and our run is positive 1. And so visually, from this y-intercept of b equals 1, we go down 2 units and we go to the right 1 unit. We go down 2 units, go right 1 unit. So go down two units and go right one unit. Now notice that this m equals negative two can also be expressed as two over negative one. Two over negative one is still negative two. In this case, the rise is two units, but the run is negative one unit. In other words, I can also come up with the same line if I go up two units, but I go left one unit. And so it looks like this. I go up two units, I go to the left one unit. Now, if you are going to connect all these points, we are going to get the graph of y equals negative 2x plus 1. Now, at this point, what we have so far is we are given a linear equation in slope-intercept form, and we are graphing the line. Now, let's do the reverse. Given the graph, find the equation. Let's say this is the graph. What is the equation of this red line? So again, let's locate the y-intercept. The y-intercept is b equals 3. Then let's find the slope. We go up one unit and we go to the right one unit. That means our m is 1 over 1 or simply 1. And by knowing what is m and what is b, we can now substitute that in the equation y equals mx plus b. So the equation now of this red line is y equals 1x plus 3, where our m is this 1 and our b is this 3. This equation in the slope-intercept form indicates that this 3 is the point of intersection between the y-axis and the red line. And this slope of 1 means I go up 1 unit and I go to the right to go to the next point. And given those two points, we can connect them and come up with 
this red line. And when you are given 1x plus 3, you can also just write it as x plus 3. It's implied that the coefficient here is 1 unit. And this is now the equation of the red line. Now let's go to the next form. It's the point slope form. The equation is y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. Here m is the slope and we are given a point with coordinate x sub 1 comma y sub 1 and this x sub 1 now is the x coordinate of that point and this y sub 1 is the y coordinate of that given point. Let's have an example. Let's say we are given this graph and we know that this point is at 1 comma negative 2. So we are given a point, and the coordinate of that point is 1 comma negative 2. We would like to find the equation of this red line. Next, we need to find the slope. And in order to find the slope, we can locate any two convenient points, and we are going to identify what's the rise over the run. Let's say those two points are this green and this red points. The rise is we go up two units up, that's positive 2, and we go one unit to the right, that's positive 1. So the slope is 2 over 1. Substituting these values in our point slope form, we now have y minus negative 2 equals 2 times the quantity x minus 1, where this y sub 1 is equal to this negative 2, and this x sub 1 is equal to this positive 1, and our slope is positive 2. So simplifying, we now have y plus 2 equals 2x minus 2, where the right side is arrived at by distributing 2 to the binomial x minus 1. And subtracting 2 from both sides of the equation, we arrive at y equals 2x minus 4 for the equation of this red line here at the right. Let's check if this is correct. The y-intercept is negative 4, so that's verified because the point of intersection between the y-axis and the red line is indeed y equals negative 4. And the slope is we go up two units, we go to the right one unit that is 2 over 1 or 2. So this equation is verified to be correct. Now let's have another form. That is the two-point formula. The two-point formula is y minus y sub 1 over x minus x sub 1 equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I'm going to show you that this two-point form and this point-slope form can be derived from each other. Notice that the right side here at the two-point form is our formula for the slope. So we can replace it with m and copy the left side. Multiplying both sides of the equation by the denominator x minus x sub 1, we now arrive at this formula, y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. And notice that this last equation is just our point slope form. Now let's proceed to apply this two-point formula. Let's say we are given this equation at the right, and we are given two points, point A and point B, with these coordinates. The coordinate of point A is at 0, 2, and the coordinate of point B is at 4, negative 3. Applying now the two-point formula, Substituting these values, we have y minus our y sub 1 is this negative 3 over x minus x sub 1. Our x sub 1 is the x coordinate of the first point, that is 0. Equals y sub 2 is the y coordinate of the second point, so that's negative 3, minus y sub 1 is the y coordinate of the first point, which is 2, all over x sub 2 is equal to 4, and x sub 1 is equal to 0. Now simplifying, we arrive at y minus 2 over x equals negative 5 over 4. And multiplying both sides of the equation by x, we arrive at y minus 2 equals negative 5 over 4x. Then add positive 2 to both sides of the equation to arrive at y equals negative 5 over 4x plus 2. And this is now the equation of this red line at the right. Let's have another concept. That is the concept of slope. We already defined slope as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And there are four kinds of slopes. The positive slope, the negative slope, the zero slope, and the undefined slope. Now let's discuss each one of these slopes. Let's begin with the positive slope. Let's say we have these 17 lines corresponding to these 17 equations. The form is y equals mx. And so the coefficient of x represents the slope of the line. So for this black line here, the equation is y equals 0.1x, and therefore the slope is m equals 0.1. For the next line, the red line, the slope is 0.2, the next is 0.3, and so on. So we have all these slopes from 0.1 to 1 in increasing order. Now the slope of this black line is 1.2, for the next is 1.5, next is 2, 3, 4, 6, and 10. 
What do we notice about these lines? Notice that all of these lines have positive slopes and all of these lines are rising when viewed from left to right. Some are flatter than the rest, some are steeper than the rest. And the flatter the line is, the closer the line is to the horizontal line, the lower is the value of the slope. And the more vertical the line is, the higher is the value of the slope. And what is common among these 17 lines is that all of these lines are inclined upward. They are rising when viewed from left to right. Now let's go to the negative slopes. We are given here 17 equations corresponding to these 17 lines. The slope of the first line here, the one that's closer to the x-axis, is m equals negative 0.1. The next line has a slope of negative 0.2, and so on and so forth, up to m equals negative 10. What do we notice about the slopes? First, all the slopes are negative. And the closer the negative number is to zero on the number line, the flatter is the graph of the line. Or if you think in terms of absolute value, the higher is the absolute value of these negative slopes, the steeper the line is. What is common among all these 17 lines is that they all have negative slopes and they are all decreasing or sloping downwards when read from left to right. They're all falling down. Then let's look at this line. This is a vertical line and this line has an undefined slope. That is because if we recall the formula for the slope, when we have a vertical line, no matter what two points you get, the x-coordinates of those two points remain the same. And so, that is equivalent to getting a zero in the denominator when you subtract x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And we know that division by zero is undefined. So the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Now let's go to the last slope, the zero slope. Horizontal lines have zero slopes. That is because if you get any two points on a horizontal line, their y-coordinates do not vary. They remain the same. And so getting zero in the will result to getting a zero for the value of the fraction. So the slope of all horizontal lines are always equal to zero. Now, when we have two or more lines, we can talk about the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. When two lines are parallel, their slopes are equal. Conversely, when the slopes of the lines are equal, then the lines are either parallel or coincident, two lines that are on top of each other. Let's have an example. Let's say we are given this equation. Find the equation of a line passing through a point 2, negative 4, and parallel to y equals 3x plus 2. What is given here is a point with coordinate 2, comma, negative 4, and so our x sub 1 is positive 2, and our y sub 1 is negative 4. For the line y equals 3x minus 2, it is implied that the slope is positive 3, and the keyword here is parallel. So when the two lines are parallel, their slopes are equal. And if the slope of one line is 3, then the slope of the other line that we would like to find the equation of must also be equal to 3. Since we know the slope and the coordinate of a point, then we can use the point-slope formula. And substituting the values to our formula, our m is positive 3, our y sub 1 is negative 4, and our x sub 1 is positive 2. Negative, negative becomes positive and distribute 3 to the binomial to arrive at this equation. And subtracting 4 from both sides of the equation, we arrive at y equals 3x minus 10 for the equation of the line. And visually, it looks like this. The given line y equals 3x plus 2 is this red line. The line that we would like to find the equation of is this green line. And that line passes through the point with coordinate 2, negative 4. The equation that we computed is y equals 3x minus 10 for the equation of the green line. Notice that these two equations have the same slopes, but they have different y-intercepts. The y-intercept of the red line is y equals positive 2, and the y-intercept of the green line is y equals negative 10. Next, let's proceed to perpendicular lines. When two lines are perpendicular, the product of their slopes is negative 1, or m sub 1 is equal to the negative reciprocal of m sub 2. Let's illustrate this. Let's say we are asked to find the equation of a line passing through the point 3, 4 and perpendicular to y equals negative 2x minus 4. So again, we are given a point and we are given this equation and the slope is negative 2. The two lines are perpendicular. 
So the slope of the given equation is m sub 1 equals negative 2. Since the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals of each other, then the slope of the second line m sub 2 is equal to negative 1 over m sub 1. And since the value of m sub 1 is negative 2, we arrive at negative 1 over negative 2, which is simplified as 1 half. So we know the slope and we know the coordinate of a point, we can use the point slope form. Visually, it looks like this. The red line is y equals negative 2x minus 4. The green line is the line that we would like to find the equation of. We know that the line passes through point P with coordinate 3, negative 4. So using now the point slope form, our m is this 1 half, and our y sub 1 is this 4, and our x sub 1 is this 3, and simplifying, we arrive at the equation y equals 1 half x plus 5 over 2 for the equation of the green line. And notice that when we multiply negative 2 times 1 half, the result is negative 1, which is consistent with this property of perpendicular lines. m sub 1 times m sub 2 equals negative 1. The angle at the point of intersection must be a right angle. So good luck to your exams. If you are taking practice exams, SAT, or just a unit test, I hope this review material will be able to help you pass your algebra test. And for our next video, here is our recommended video. This is Lando Assistant, and thank you very much for watching. We hope to see you again in our next video. Bye for now.